Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. And you viewers are asking a lot of good questions. One of the questions is about pulse welding or pulsing during your welding. I don't pulse weld very often, but when I do, I do it for very specific reasons. So we're going to cover some of those reasons today. One of them is out of position welding. I'll put pulsing on my machine, I'll turn it on and I'll give you some specifics here shortly, but when you're welding out of position a lot of times gravity is working against you so you turn the pulser on and it helps keep the liquid puddle up above you instead of on you. Second of all, if you turn pulsing on you can get some controlled penetration so if you have an operation where you're not quite controlling the penetration or it's falling through too quick, turn the pulser on. Another reason is it puts out a very special ripple effect. Now that special ripple sometimes gets correlated to what I call the cool factor. It just looks good. And then uh, you can get into car restoration where you're welding on not so good materials. You've got rust. Uh, you, you know the steel is uh, welding okay, but if you turn the pulser on, you're going to get a little bit of agitation in there and it's going to help it weld a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about pulsing and you may or may not have a pulser on your machine. So what I want to show you here is a foot control. I'm using a foot control just about 99% of the time. If you don't have pulsing on your machine, you'll see a lot, of, a lot of people using the foot control and all they're doing is they're mashing this down at a certain frequency. So for instance, if I've got the machine set at 120 amps and I'm using this frequency, that's about one pulse per second and I'm going from 120 amps to zero. Back and forth, back and forth. Well some of the machines will do that for you and that's what we're going to describe. So there's just a million ways to set up pulsing and you just have to set it up the way you like it best. But I'm going to give you four different methods of welding and one of them doesn't have any pulse at all. So I'm going to show you that. One's going to have one pulse per second. One's going to have 10 pulses per second. And then one's going to have 500 pulses per second. So let me get my gear on, set the machine, and show you what we can do. We put the clear Pyrex cup on for better viewing. You don't have to do this. You can just use your normal gas lens or your normal setup. But I've got the machine set at 120 amps and I'm going to create arc initiation and have no pulsing at all. This is straight DC. Yeah, my travel speed is, so oh, gosh, somewhere around seven inches a minute. And I just want to show you that I'm getting the full 120 amps. And that's just a normal weld. Now we're on stainless steel. Now you can do this on steel. You know, you can actually do this on aluminum as well. Okay, so I'm just going to terminate the weld. And hold the torch on there for a little bit of a post flow. About five seconds. Okay, so we're done with this part of it. Okay, we've got the machine set with the pulsing at one pulse per second. And what you see there is 120 amps. It drops down to 30 amps. And it's at one pulse per second. Now if you elect add filler, you can time it at one pulse per second. You start getting a speed higher than that though, it's very difficult to time. Okay, so I'm about to finish my weld. I'll back off very slowly. Hold the argon post flow over it for a few seconds. Okay, and we're finished with one pulse per second. Okay, we've reset the machine. We are now at 10 pulses per second. 
And you can see it's much faster. We're hitting about 120 amps at the peak, 30 amps down at the background current. Yeah, 10 pulses per second. Actually, it's kind of hard to adjust your eyes to it. And obviously, you can't add filler and try to time it. Okay, so we're at the end of the weld. I backed off. Hold the post flow on. And this weld is finished. Okay, we've set the machine on 500 hertz or 500 cycles per second. And you can tell it sure puts out a different sound altogether. Now the arc, definitely a much tighter arc, really gets with the program. You can use this a lot in a fillet weld if you're having trouble getting down into the root. Makes kind of a uh, strange sound, but that's just what you have to live with. Okay, we're getting to the end of the weld. I'm backing off. You can hear the 500 hertz, and we're off. Okay, let's do a recap on the four welds. Now, the first weld that I'm pointing at was DC only. That's DC straight. It had no pulsing whatsoever. And you'll notice that it's a very soft weld. It's actually easy to add filler material to. So if that's what you need, then choose number one. Number two does have pulsing on it, and it has one pulse per second. Now, one pulse allows you to time the pulse. Time it to where you can dab, dab, dab at one pulse per second. Now, when I talk about currents, I set the machine at 120 amps peak current. The pulsing drops it down to 30 amps. That's what I preset it at. And it's on time, 50% of the time. You can change that as well. But like I say, there are so many settings on here, I just want to give you a couple of my settings. Okay, moving on to the third sample here. Uh, again, we didn't add filler on any of these, but this one had 10 pulses per second. And it started to choke the arc down and make it a little bit tighter. And so we decided to up it to the max of this machine, which is 500 pulse per second. And that's number four. And when you get 500 pulses per second, you have a very, very stiff arc here. And if you'll notice, these two wells with the higher pulsing are actually narrower. And sometimes you can get less heat input, less distortion by turning pulsing on. So really, you have to choose what fits your needs the best. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.